ever wonder where the trout on your plate came from? Chances are it's been farmed. The amount of fish that we eat has increased fivefold in the last 50 years, and traditional methods of fishing just can't keep up. And so as a result, the aquaculture industry is worth 80 billion US dollars annually. As natural fish resources become further challenged and wild stocks come under greater pressure, aquaculture has an important role to play in ensuring the sustainable supply of fish. The practice of aquaculture has come under intense scrutiny from environmentalists, concerned about the environmental impact and also on the impacts on wild populations, some of whom are uh, very threatened. Greg, we're miles from the nearest market for your fish. Why on earth did you choose Katsi Dam for your operation? When we were looking at expanding our trout farming operations from Franschhoek, we were looking for the most superb, clear, clean water. And in southern Africa, the only place that provides that is the waters of the Lesotho Highlands. There are all sorts of environmental concerns around fish farming, in adding more nutrients to the water and uh, the concern of escapees uh, impacting on wild populations. How do you guys mitigate against that? Realistically, you do get escapees from time to time. What we do to try and ensure that doesn't happen is we have weekly net inspections where we literally pull these nets up and we'll be inspecting for holes, etc. So which standards do you benchmark your, your water testing against? They're set by the Lesotho Highland Development Authority and the National Environmental Secretariat, uh, who ultimately answer to the Water Commission um, of Lesotho and South Africa. And there is a modelling of carrying capacity to ensure that you don't eutrophy the water or have an impact on it. We have water quality criteria that we have to meet and we do daily and monthly monitoring. This water body is being created for supplying water to South Africa and it needs to be in a pristine condition. In the upper reaches of the Malibamatsa River here, one of the largest rivers in Lesotho, and at times of the year the water flow through the site here is as much as 20 to 30,000 litres a second. And given the enormous size of the dam, we have virtually no impact on it but also it's creating this pristine water, which gives our fish this wonderful flavor and taste. One of the biggest concerns around fish farming is the fish in fish out ratio. That is how many wild caught fish need to be turned into food in order to keep farmed fish alive. Fish farming gives you a far more efficient ratio than land-based animals. Um, the closest that uh, any an other animal comes to fish farming is uh, poultry or chicken farming. We can trace back to our feed manufacturers where the uh, fish meal has come from that they use. And in our South African foods, it's traced back to pelagic fish like um, poultry and sardines that are used. And those fisheries, for instance, are controlled very much so by marine and coastal management is total of allowable catches annually. Greg, there's a very strong smell of cloves coming off this water. What's that? Simon, we're anaesthetizing these fish using a natural clove oil. And today what we're doing is just doing a sample weight of the fish to monitor the quality and health and size, etc. of the fish. Do you use antibiotics on your fish? No, we don't. We don't like to go over 10 kilograms of fish per cubic meter of water. We'd like to have healthy fish, but with our pristine water quality here and that management practice, we ensure then we have good, healthy, happy fish that taste good. The sighting of these pens in a part of the dam where there's a lot of water that flows down the valley means that no pumps are needed to circulate fresh water through the farm and that means that this fish farm is incredibly energy efficient. The journey of the trout is a fascinating one. The disease-free eggs are hatched in the clear streams of the hatchery in the Franschhoek Mountains. Once they reach two grams, these fingerlings are transported by truck and arrive at the Lesotho Highlands in special tanks. In the water of the Katsi Dam, they move through a series of tanks and pens until 12 months later, they reach a size of one and a half kilograms, at which point they are harvested and returned for processing. What starts out as only 20 kilograms of eggs ends up delivering over 150 tons of fish to Woolworths.
Michael, why does Woolworths go to all the effort of uh, sourcing their trout from uh, over here in Lesotho? Here in Katsi, we find the perfect conditions for rearing trout. Um, and once you've eaten this trout, then you'll realize that um, you, know, you can't get better quality trout in South Africa than this. Because we work, work so closely with the guys in Katsi, um, they know exactly what we want from them in terms of environmental monitoring. The guideline addresses all the major concerns with regards to agriculture, specific to trout farming. Um, and I think that will go a long way in terms of making sure that there's absolutely no concerns um, with regards to environmental impact or other poor farming practices. One of the things that struck me uh, just floating around Katsi Dam today is, is how clear the, the water is. Uh, I assume that uh, water quality plays a big role in the quality of the product? Environmental conditions and especially the water quality makes a big, big difference um, on the quality of the flesh. The Katsi project here in the Lesotho Highlands has become a regional leader in aquaculture. And I think it's great that Woolworths uh, not only manages and, and monitors their suppliers, uh, but also partners with them in making sure that their impact on the environment is as little as, as possible. And a well-managed and sustainable aquaculture industry will go a long way to making sure that we can feed everybody.